On three minute analytical chemistry, we're going to be covering atomic emission spectroscopy, AES. This is a technique that's very similar to atomic absorption spectroscopy, AAS, both in types of the types of samples we can analyze and how we introduce our sample for analysis. And what we really rely upon is the fact that when our sample is uh, in an atomic state, we don't have a lot of different states that we can uh, look at. In other words, our lines are very narrow. But unlike atomic absorption, where we're shining light and looking at how much it was absorbed by different atoms, we're exciting them thermally and then looking at emission. We're going to look at the wavelength of light that are emitted by different metals in our sample and use that wavelength of light to relate it to the metal that was present in our sample. Just like atomic absorption, we can use our flame to atomize our sample. Only along with the atomization, we're going to get some of these metals into the excited state. And that's given by the Boltzmann distribution, where the ratio of atoms in my excited to ground states given by the degeneracy of that state times this exponential factor that contains the difference in energy between the states divided by the Boltzmann constant times the absolute temperature. Therefore, you can see if I have a higher temperature, I'm going to get more species in the excited state that can then emit. Now, in my flame, I have some chemistry going on where I have my metal M and it can be ionized. If it's in an ionized state, it's not going to emit. Now, we can use argon plasmas as opposed to flame. Argon plasmas afford higher temperatures, which means we can get more of our species in the excited state. Additionally, argon plasmas have a high concentration of electrons, which then, by Le Chatelier's principle, pushes this equilibrium back that direction, causing there to be more of our species in the atomic state. Now, if we look at our atoms, they're going to be emitting wavelengths of light along with our flame or plasma will also have wavelengths of light emitted. We have some sort of wavelength selector and this selector can then separate our wavelengths and we're going to measure specific wavelengths and then relate those wavelengths to the metals that are present. If we do this over multiple wavelengths at the same time, this can give us true multi-element analysis because we can measure dozens of wavelengths simultaneously, we can relate it to dozens of different metals that are present in our sample.